This video is sponsored by Glucose, the developer behind the popular add-on UV Pack Master. More on that later. The video game industry is full of opportunities for 3D artists. Many professionals believe that by 2024, around 220 billion will be spent by gamers and consumers in this field. A big part of the job of game developers is creating different game assets, including characters, props, and game environments, which means that creating ready game assets is not gonna go away anytime soon. If you have been thinking about modeling some ready game assets, it's never too late. Maybe the next question you should be asking is which software you should use. Well, for this, we have one of the best options for free, which is Blender. The process of creating characters and props for video games is similar to creating an 3D model for different purposes, with the exception that you need to make sure that it runs smoothly inside a game engine, which forces you to follow a certain workflow. Game developers usually follow a workflow that has four big steps, which are very important, and skipping one of them will impact your model's quality and performance for sure. And of course, Blender provides you with all the tools necessary to do that. The first big step is creating a high-poly model. The high poly model is the first version of the finished game asset, which contains a very polygon dense mesh. The reason behind converting it to a low poly model is because the game engine can only handle a limited number of polygons, that's why its performance will be affected. There are different types of high poly models you can create, such as organic and hard surface models. The common thing between the two is the good quality of details. In Blender, you can either use digital sculpture for creation of organic models, and this includes characters, trees, and even buildings and stuff. You could also count on polygon or box modeling, which consists of moving, rotating, and scaling vertices, in addition to edges and polygons, to create different things such as environment props and simple 3D models. These functions are accessible in both sculpt and the edit mode, by the way. The second phase is creating a low poly model, and there are several techniques you can follow, but each one of them gives you a different topology. You're gonna start with one point, for example, and by covering all the high poly models with a new mesh that has a better topology. You're gonna avoid angons, which are faces with more than four edges because it impacts the model shading and distorts badly when animating. There is also another notion you have to be aware of, which are the start's vertices. It joins five edges or more. They are inevitable in character creation, geometry topology, but with experience, you will know exactly where to place them. In Blender, you can create a low poly mesh with this technique by combining all the modifiers together, including subdivision surface, shrink wrap, mirror, and sometimes solidify. All these modifications are done in the edit mode, by the way. Overall, the low poly model facilitates the process of texturing and animating, and most importantly, it is more efficient inside a game engine. Another way you can consider when creating your low poly model from the high poly is using modifiers. It reduces the mesh density, but it doesn't provide the best topology in most cases. These modifiers include a subdivision surface in addition to multi-resolution, which subdivide your mesh into quads. At first, they add more mesh, but after applying them, you can eliminate the inessential vertices, so you can maintain the general form and shape with less cleaner topology. The other modifiers include decimate and remesh, which perform the same operation, but with more randomized mesh. They are used especially in sculpting, and these methods are used in models that are not intended for deformation. Now, the next big step after creating a low poly model is doing UV mapping or UV unwrapping. It is a projection of 3D mesh into a 2D plane. This step is extremely important because it is the gateway for the next steps. Blender can do this task by itself, but it would be less precise than doing it manually, since it doesn't know where to place seams. The importance of UV mapping is that you can control the proportions of your different projected islands. In Blender, you can unwrap your model in the edit mode and access your projection in the UV editor workspace. But the best way to unwrap your game assets is using add-ons. The default UV pack engine is in the best and the whole UV editor lacks a lot of functionalities. UV pack master 3, the sponsor of today's video, helps you have a great time on dealing with UVs in Blender. It is a GPU accelerated and fully featured packing engine, and at this point, it is safe to say that the add-on is the most popular UV packing tool for Blender. It comes with a huge list of tools and features such as advanced UV aligning tools, stacking tools, the ability to prioritize UV island during packing, advanced UV grouping, textile density tools, and even the ability to pack non-square textures. The add-on also comes with embedded Python for advanced users to perform custom operations through code. 
the latest version had introduced a drastic optimization when it comes to performance for UV maps, with a huge number of UV faces, as it can now pack a UV map containing 15 million faces in about 160 seconds, which makes it a great tool for advanced photogrammetry applications. But I think the best feature and most helpful one that I found personally useful is how easy it is to pack your textures with the exact texture density you want in just one click. So if that sounds interesting for you, you can check the links in the description below. Now we're gonna jump to one of the most important steps which is baking, which means transferring the high poly model details into texture maps that will be used later by the low poly model to give you the impression that it is actually really detailed just like the high poly model. After this, we have texturing or texture painting your model. In Blender, you can do both. There are different options that allow you to do each one of them. In baking, when it comes to the normals and the displacement maps, the best option to bake them is starting from a multi-resolution mesh. When it comes to texturing, Blender comes with a real-time engine for texture mode, which means you can paint your model and see the results immediately, while you can also edit it in separate 2D workspace, which is the image editor. Both of them use the same tools and the same control settings. So creating a game-ready asset can take from a few minutes to a few hours if it is simple and several days if it is complicated. In general, it consumes time, but if you have enough patience to do that, it's gonna be great. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. You can also check some of our previous videos. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.